So almost like desexualized sex. <laughs> and I just did a sweep, a supermarket sweep of all of them. It's hard to lie to someone in the face when you're standing there butt naked in front of them. Oh my god! No, what the f Oh my god! Oh my Tegan. god! Oh my god! What? Well, that. Let's get into this. What made you sign up for to be the host of Dating Naked? The money. <laughs> No, I'm joking. Um, the money. And um, no, uh, the guys from Paramount Plus called me and said that this is something we'd like you to do. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? Like, I don't understand what you mean. And they're like, yeah, they're naked and they're dating and you see everything. I'm like, yeah, but it'll be blurred. They're like, no. They're like, what? They're like, listen, it's been done once in Germany. Take a look at the German version, but remember our version and I look a lot different. So I was like, okay. Well, I watched the German version and for 10 minutes in, my jaw was on the floor because I couldn't believe that everything was just so there on the screen in 4K, like HD. I was like, oh my God. Um, but then sort of as the episode went on, I was like, I can't believe that one's talking to that one or this one's talking about that. And then my brain clicked and went, oh my God, this is actually good because yeah, they're naked, but that is, it's not like defining it. Rah, rah, rah. Um, so I was like, yeah. Let's do it, let's do it. And um, here we are. Here we are. And so obviously other from the very obvious thing that they're all in the nude, they're all naked. How would you say this, it's a dating show at the end of the day. Yeah. So how would you say it separates it from Naked Attraction or Love Island, Too Hot to Handle? Do you know example? what, it's so different. And I tell you why, with, with saying, you know, forgetting about they're naked, but we have to bring that in because not just physically they're naked, but what that did is that gave them this sort of vulnerability and sort of an equal playing ground because they're not hiding behind anything. So there was this nice vulnerability rather than a horrible vulnerability. And it eliminated that, oh, I can't wait to get your clothes off and get you in bed, or I can't wait to see her naked, I can't wait to see him naked. That would all gone, so it almost like desexualized sex in a way, because it was all there. So right, we've, we've skipped over all that prelude. Now I've got to get to know you. So, they got to know each other a lot easier and actually a lot more deeper than I've personally seen on, on, on other shows. Um, and the thread of them being naked runs throughout the 10 episodes because situations happen or conversations happen because they're naked. Not because of what they're talking about, but it's because they're naked, then this situation's arisen or this has happened because we're so vulnerable, because they're... And when you watch the entire series, that's what you find at the end. And it's an experiment as well. You know, it's taking, we like to say it's dating, taken back to bare basics, and it really is. It's like, off you go, you're all naked, bye-bye. And that's it. And we'll throw in, you know, the odd little uh, surprise. Um, and we had no idea how much the surprises would impact what then continued to happen throughout the season. Yeah, of course, in the first episode, we see that there's like exes of sorts and they don't even realize they're going in there with Tegan and yeah. Romeo. Yeah. So are there more tricks up your sleeve throughout the season? There's a, there's a few tricks up our sleeve. Um, with, with two of the contestants, yeah, they had a little bit of previous history, um, but it wasn't like that was forced or on purpose. It, it wasn't like that. But as the season goes on, things start coming to light that you, you start to understand and a few surprises that I might uh, throw into the mix or a few decisions that I might throw into the mix all start coming full circle when people start to realise, hold up a minute, is this right? Should I be with this person? Should I do that? So we didn't want to be that show that goes in and meddles and tells people what to do. We want them to actually live it and we wanted people to find love ultimately and to see if it works. Because if it works, great for us. If it don't work, then what's the point of it? And you know, we filmed this back in February in Colombia and um, people are still together now. So we know it's not for TV because it's not even on yet. <laughs> so it's, it's not been out for months. So it's not like they're doing it for the money. They're, they're not earning any money from it. So we know it's real. And so is there that bit more of, you know, because what I noticed in the first episode that there was already that level of like maybe jealousy and possessiveness. And I think because they are that much more closer because they're obviously all naked, do you think that adds a bit more authenticity to it? Yeah, it really, really does. It, it, it's hard to lie to someone 
in the face when you're standing there butt naked in front of them. It's quite difficult to do it clothed, but to do it naked is like near run impossible. So the connections that are made fit, are a lot more real. And like I said earlier, they're a lot more deeper because you're in this club. And you know, for me, I'm the host, I'm clothed. I offered, they said no. Um, <laughs> but I'm clothed, so I'm at an advantage and I wanted them to understand that just because I'm clothed and you're not, I don't want you to feel at a disadvantage or anything like that. And so for me, it was really important that I had a good relationship with the daters and they had a good relationship with me. And we went through so much like intimacy training before we started the job and, you know, talking about that what these are called, what that is called, what this is called, you know, correct pronunciation of things and, and, and analogies. Um, and, that was all well and good, but I was like, but if someone's eliminated, I want to give them a hug. Like, that's just who I am, that's how I work. And they're like, but you're clothed and they're not. So it's like really being careful about things like that. And the first episode when I walk into the house and I see all the daters for the first time, um, they're all standing by the pool and I say, come and stand with me. And as they come and stood with me, we had to move a camera because the sun had caught it. And um, there was like a minute of like silence, right? No one talk, rah, rah, rah. Like, okay. Standing there and I just went, I looked at them all in the eye and I went, I've just got to get this out of the way now. <laughs> and I just did a sweep, a supermarket sweep of all of them. And they all just burst out laughing. And from that moment on, I just went, right, we've done it now. It's all out in the open. <laughs> and that was it. They trusted me, I trusted them. And it was absolutely fine. I'd walk into the house and they'd be like, right, like, you know, it was just normal. It was just really, really normal. And as for me, from coming from a show that's a reality show as well, it's so important that the contestants feel that way. And I'd always want the daters to feel like that. Of course, and there's a notice at the end of the episode to say that you know they've gone through this intimacy training. So much. And was that really important when doing a show it like this? It was majorly this? important as well, you know, and weirdly enough, my mum, for want of a better person, she brought up a really interesting thing um, that no one else has asked me. Um, and she said, but like, what if one of the girls of, it's that time of the month? And I went, do you know what, mum? It's a really good question, and I actually know what the protocol is for that. And we did have contestants that were, were having their time of their month, and in that instance, we'd said to the female contestants, you know, if if you would prefer during that time, you could wear like some new. We've got we had like modesty pants, we called them like nude underwear, um, and the girls all refused because that's how comfortable they all felt together and that was a testament to the crew, to Paramount Plus, to everyone for doing that training and making sure that everyone knew that this is how this is and we're gonna make sure you're always comfortable. And that to me, because I remember it, I think we got to the last week of filming, I went, I haven't seen any of the girls in pants and we've been here a month. And they were like, because they don't, didn't want it, they just felt comfortable. And, and that, that's exactly what I'm saying. And it seems weird to talk about that, but. It's, I think it's a really valid point because that's how comfortable this show was. And that translates into the show that's been made because if these people weren't comfortable doing it, they're not exhibitionists, they're not nudists. They don't do this in their everyday life, but they all felt so comfortable with each other. That's why we got the show that we ended up getting. But the drama, that's a, that's a whole nother level. Because there's a clip in the next time bit where even you look absolutely Shocked. stunned. Yeah, it was. Happening. My so jaw was on the floor. <laughs> so were there even moments that, even though you know if there's a surprise in store, you're just still not prepared for it? Well, I thought I was prepared and I like to be Mr. Prepared. I will know what the surprise is, but I don't know how they're going to react. And even like an elimination, I could sit there, you know, in the gallery, chatting away with the producers going, well, I reckon she'll choose him and he'll choose her. Or, or, well, the amount of times that what I thought and everyone else thought was going to happen didn't happen. And again, we're now on a different course was incredible. There's, I'd say look out for a few episodes later in the series. Watch out for heaven and hell. It's, even now I almost get like hairs stand up on the back of my, it was crazy. Cool, definitely. I, I, that I'm the nice, I'd like to think I'm like Mr. Nice Guy host, but even I had to say, get out. <laughs> It was amazing. Oh, I look forward to that yeah. one. And I guess finally you've said, you know, there are people still together, so it proves it makes sense. So would mm. you love to do a season two if that opportunity came Oh my around? God, I would, love to, I would love nothing more than to go back and do this all over again. Because not only did we have the best time making it, 
looking back on it now and seeing the final product of the show, the show's incredible. And you know, I hope people go and watch it. Even if they watch it for the wrong reasons at first, I know you're gonna fall in love with it. Um, and that's what's been really fun about it, is that we never knew what we were making. Um, and now we've got it, we're so proud of it. And yeah, I'd love to do see that. You, you in? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll watch it, Get I'll out. come back again for season two. <laughs>